After the success of the low one S, Le goes back with the low two. Sporting the same internals as phones priced up to four times higher, the low two spec sheet looks very impressive. Is there more to this phone than meets the eye? Well, that's what we aim to find out in this video. But before we do, if this is your first time here or in case you just can't remember, my name's Ash, this is C4D Tech and you're watching my full review of the Leico Le2. Let's get started. As always, let's start with the built-in design. The Le2 feels like an evolution of the Le One S's design. The camera and fingerprint scanner look different, yes, but the build remains quite similar overall. To the front, on top, we have a notification LED, sensors, earpiece, and an 8 megapixel front facing camera. That's followed by a 5.5 inch IPS LCD display. And at the bottom, we have capacitive keys that are visible only when backlit. This makes for a very clean front. To the back, we have the secondary noise cancelling microphone, a 16 megapixel rear camera with a dual tone dual LED flash, a fingerprint scanner, and LED TV branding. To the right, we have the power button of the volume rockers. There's an IR blaster to the top. We have a tray to the left and here's where you can add two SIM cards. Sadly, there's still no room for memory expansion via microSD. The primary microphone, speaker and a USB Type-C port reside at the bottom. Notable by its absence is the 3.5mm headphone jack. Le Eco will be selling CDLA earphones separately that will plug into the Type-C port for better audio output. They do state that moving to CDLA and omitting the 3.5mm headphone jack is a step in the right direction. I don't necessarily agree, there aren't a ton of CDLA earphones available yet, but fret not as Leico have included a 3.5mm converter in the box, so while you can't charge your phone and listen to music via headphones at the same time, you can at least continue using your existing earphones. I don't, like I said, I don't necessarily agree with this change. Here's a poll, you let me know whether you agree or disagree with it. Anyway, moving on, the Le2 retains the 3000mAh battery and the 5.5 inch display, but is 0.1mm slimmer at 7.5mm and is about a good 15 grams lighter. There's one little caveat though. There seems to be some quality control issues with the display. When you long press, you hear creaking. It kind of feels hollow underneath. Le Eco tell me that it's an issue with my unit alone and have promised to send me a replacement but it's been over 10 days and they seem not to be able to find a unit without the issue. Because uh, jokes apart guys, other YouTubers and even you guys from Twitter have reported the same issue. So it's kind of worrying. It's annoying when you copy paste stuff and that can be overlooked for now. But how does this work out in the long run? Does this cause a degradation of the display? Only time will tell. Anyway. Talking about the display, the Lotus sports a 5.5 inch Full HD IPS LCD display giving it a pixel density of about 400 pixels per inch. The display is sharp enough, the viewing angles are good, colors are natural, the contrast is excellent for a non-AMOLED display and it gets bright enough so as to not pose any issues outdoors. Underneath the hood, the Lotus is powered by the Snapdragon 652 chip. Now that's a combination of 4 Cortex-A72 cores clocked at 1.8GHz each, 4 Cortex-A53 cores clocked at 1.4GHz each coupled with an Adreno 510 GPU and 3 gigs of RAM. We also get 32 gigs of onboard storage. And like I mentioned earlier, there's no room for memory expansion via microSD. With day-to-day -day intense scenarios like gaming, things get a little confusing. My Le2 that you're seeing in this video had no issues running anything and everything we threw at it, with ease nonetheless. It did hit close to 47 degrees after 30 minutes of intense gaming. That said, there seems to be a variance with units that Le Eco sent out. For example, Ranjit's unit, throttle performance, it didn't overheat, the temps hovered around 42 degrees, but the gameplay was stuttery. So how will your unit fare? It's either gonna perform well and overheat, or maintain temps due to throttling, meaning performance is gonna take a hit. That is unfortunate. Seems like there's a lot of quality control issues here. Anyway, moving on, all this is powered by a 3000mAh non-user replaceable battery and the battery life is quite good. With my moderate usage which involves Wi-Fi and 3G on all day, social media, push notifications, a lot of emails, a couple of hours of calls, 15-20 to 20 minutes of casual gaming and a bit of video streaming, with this kind of usage I was able to get through a day on a single charge with about 20-30% to 30 juice left at the end of each of the 7 days that I use this phone as my primary device. Note that the Le2 supports quick, super quick charging, I guess that's what they're calling it, and can go from 0 to 50 in about 30 minutes. 
Anyway, with that, let's move on to the camera performance. The Lure 2 sports a 16 megapixel rear camera with an f2.0 aperture and support for face detection autofocus. The camera performance, unfortunately, is underwhelming. The images have decent amounts of detail, it tends to marginally overexpose shots, and the dynamic range is bad. Under low light, there's a lot of noise, the software processing is not really good either. This camera can theoretically shoot 4K videos at 30 frames per second, but the amount of artifacts and noise here makes this footage borderline unusable. The slow motion footage is worse. What's weirder is the fact that the autofocus bug that we first saw on the Low One S returns. This camera cannot autofocus while recording video. End the video recording and you can see that the camera is perfectly capable of autofocusing. It's just that it doesn't autofocus while the video is being recorded. The issue isn't present with third-party apps though, and that makes it all the more weird for the Eco to not have fixed it for months. Anyway, the 8 megapixel selfie camera does a decent job, and for a more in-depth look at the camera, I'll leave a card here, check out our full dedicated camera review of the Lure 2. Anyway, the bottom firing speaker is quite loud and clear, the CDLA audio was excellent, and I had no issues with call quality or cellular reception either. The fingerprint scanner located to the back is reasonably fast and accurate. It detected my fingerprint most times and can wake the display from sleep. It also doubles as a trigger for selfies. Now let's move on to the software. The Lure 2 runs on EUI 5.6 built on top of Android 6 Marshmallow. There's no app drawer here, there's a page to the left with like with Google Now Launcher. This is called Lure View and curates news from various sources. I generally tend to use the stock launcher on most devices I review I test. I understand manufacturers leaving uninstallable preloaded apps. I don't like it, but I do understand why they have to do it. But Leico's taken it to a whole new level and we have a Le Live icon to the dock at the bottom and this cannot even be moved. Well, yes, it offers a lot of streaming content. I just dislike the, not even having an option of moving the icon. So disclaimer, I use the Google Now launcher for the week that I use this phone as my primary device. Anyway, that's it, moving on. EUI handles toggles a little differently, you don't find it under the notification dropdown, but rather the recent apps key holds the quick toggles and some shortcuts. I actually like it and got used to it quick. EUI is quite fast, the user experience was great, apps opened up quick, there was hardly any lag, and the memory management was top notch. The Lure 2 performed excellently in all our speed tests, best in class performance, and best in class memory management. This phone is priced at 12,000 rupees, and at this price, it seems to be a steal, on paper at least, because it packs the same chip inside as the Sony Xperia X and the HTC 10 Lifestyle, phones that are priced four times higher. That should make me recommending this phone a no-brainer, but sadly, the issues with build quality, the display creaking in particular, the camera performance, the built-in bloatware, the overheating, throttling issues make recommending this phone a little difficult. If these are cons that you're willing to risk, willing to live with, then sure, get yourself a Lure 2. It's a fast phone that performs really well. But if you don't want to risk it, there are other options that might not pack quite the same level of specs, but provide you similar performance, uh, more or less similar performance. Anyway, that's just my take on the Lure 2. Do you agree with what I've had to say? Do you disagree? If you disagree, what is it that you disagree with? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. So I guess that's it for this review. If you did find it useful, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, vote it down. And if you want more such videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't already. If you still don't wanna pick this phone up, I'll leave a direct link in the description below. Use that and that's it. Thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, this is Ash here from C4E Tech signing off. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye now.